he like sent me like a voice memo that I don't even know. We haven't even talked about this since then, but he like sent me a voice memo and it was just like the funniest, just like, he's like, you are so good. And I am your biggest fan. And like, I was something that was just like that. And I was like, dude, I love this guy. <laughs> what up? What's up, man? You look like an old man right now, DJ. What's up? <laughs> It's the lighting. Sorry. It's all good, man. Thanks for doing this. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Or oh, and uh, yeah, we were like basically. I I um uh, I just we like the bus pulled up and we like rolled out of bed and and uh like crawled in here right now and was like we get my shit together. <laughs> all good, man. Are you guys at a hotel? Yeah, yeah. We're at uh, some hotel in New York right now. Rad. You don't play tonight, or do you play tonight? No, we don't play. We have a bunch of promo stuff, though, so we don't have, like, a show, but we're, That's like, good. this is, like, my free hour. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> dude, it's so good to see you, man. Uh, it's been such a long time. Yeah, dude, definitely. It's been it's been a while, huh? Last, it's been at least, like, a year since we, like, popped yeah. on one of these. Yeah, it was, uh, you're the, no, you're the second person I've had on here three times. Uh, Katie Turner was she just beat you by like a week because she, she was on for the third time the other day. Right, cool. By the way, I have Getting another around. band. That I, by the way, I have another band, so we'll, I'll bring them on in like a week. So okay, you got like you got like forty projects going. I don't even know how you uh, continue. I mean, I know how you continue, but I don't know how you can keep all this in kidding. your brain. I'm gonna, start, I'm gonna start another band just so I can get interviewed on. Huh? <laughs> I'll just bring you on next week, and you'll be four. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, DJ, dude, thank you so much for being here as well. Just the two of you guys today, or are we gonna have all three? Yeah, just the two of us. Uh, Hasma's traveling right now. He's oh. uh, he has a wedding going on in uh in Italy. So yeah, oh. he all good. Awesome. Yeah, rolling through, rolling through. He was just like spent the day in Copenhagen, Denmark, and he's been like running around with a cowboy hat on, like Bro, a crazy Italian man. I popped him off at the airport with that cowboy hat. It's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like he's so ex- he's like in ultimate like tourist mode it's amazing that's rad that is so rad well the just so you know dj this is about you guys uh your journey in music and obviously we'll talk about the band um like i don't we've known tosh so he we've heard his story a couple times but i'd love to hear it again but uh, we'll start with you then dj where were you born and raised um so i was born in <clears throat> la like in woodland hills okay um, but I was raised in like around Northern California. Um, I hopped okay. around a bunch, but like mainly in Stockton, California. Okay. Um, but I lived around in the Bay and stuff a little bit, just kind of, you know, jumped around. But yeah, the home base was pretty much Stockton. Okay. That makes sense with the, with the, with the Raiders hat then. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I lived in the Bay Area for a bit too. Um, oh, lived, Red, where at? In the East Bay. I lived, uh, oh, cool. yeah, just on the other side of um oakland there uh nice. walnut creek i think it's changed quite a bit since i've oh, been dude, there but <laughs> i used to live in uh i used to live in what was it san ramon and my mom worked oh, in Walnut Creek. did you really i lived in oh, san familiar. ramon for a short minute like, yeah it was short I... for me as well i don't think a lot of people stay there for a long time but <laughs> <laughs> there's probably a reason for that it's, it's like man, it's boring to say the least like sure it's like the epitome of the burbs the only, but they do have, I will say, the actually it goes through all the cities, but they have this trail that runs behind like the whole, like basically from, I think it goes from like Dublin all the way through Walnut Creek. It might even, I don't even know, the I, Iron Horse Trail, I think is what it's called. Dude, I used to play on that shit all the time. That was yeah, like, dude. my friends would like be back there in the woods and shit. And then like, well, because the, the Iron Horse Trail goes, but then it also like goes up into the hills and, and the mountains and shit behind all the houses. Yeah. We'd always just be running amok, doing all kinds of crazy shit. And there's those crazy houses there in Danville. What's the next one over that's even more rich? It's like, I can't remember. I don't know. Yeah. Cause it's like, it's like Dublin, Pleasanton, San yeah. Ramon, Danville. And then there's and something. Like- I know there's like Walnut Creek, Concord. There, there, yeah, but there's something in between Dublin or yeah, there's something know. between Danville and Walnut Creek. I can't remember, but those houses are insane. But anyway, that's rad. So you were up there for a bit. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there like, you know, in elementary school because it was like San Jose and like early elementary, uh-huh. San Ramon, like fourth, fifth grade. And then I went to Stockton and everything went to hell. 
<laughs> I went to hell from Stockton. Why? Why do you say that? It was just Stockton was just crazy. Like, I mean, I love it, and I like. I'm not like most people from Stockton where they hate on it and they talk shit and I'm like, oh, Stockton's fucking terrible and this and that and this and that. But um, like, it definitely like molded me into who I am in a lot of ways. But it's just crazy out there. Like, I I learned and saw shit that I had never seen in my life. Like, before moving there, you know what I mean? Sure. It was just interesting, like going from like you know, like suburb elementary schools in like San Jose and San Ramon and then being in Stockton, which is like kind of hood in certain areas, you know, and like sure. I, I was never like living in the hood specifically myself, you know what I mean? But like the schools are kind of just like they're all they all are with it you know what i mean right everyone kind of goes to the same schools no matter yeah where yeah there. so it's like i'm like thrown into school you know in fifth grade with kids who are like gang banging in fifth grade <laughs> oh, like man. full blown it was, it was crazy, <laughs> like it was a bit but no I, I love the city and you know like my favorite people in the world are from there and it's just i don't know it was an interesting place to come up for sure are you in la now mm-hmm. okay so yes sir and when did you start uh, playing music or when did you get into music? Man, <clears throat> like I've always been in love with music, like since I can even remember, you know, whether it's mm -hmm. like just like nonstop listening to shit. But um, like I remember my mom gave me like this shoebox full of cassette tapes when I was like six okay. and was just obsessed with all of them. And that's what like initially like sparked my interest you know and then i got i was always banging on shit and like playing on pots and pans and stuff and i actually got a drum set when i was like i think eight or nine okay. you know so pretty young i started playing drums and just like getting into that whole thing and then just like the kind of i don't know i was always moving around or living in an apartment or this or that this or that so playing drums was kind of like a pain for me for mm -hmm. as much as i wanted to play so i kind of jumped over and i got a guitar i think in like sixth grade I was like 11 or 12 okay. and then from there it's just history like I just never put the thing down and just just went you know yeah did Dude, you ever I, jump back wanna... on drums or no uh, just... I've always I've always been like you know because I produce and like do a lot of recording and stuff so it's like I've always been percussion oriented but I never really jumped back on the drums like full-time trying to like pursue that you know what I mean Dude. I was going to say him starting as a drummer is like why our band works so well. Cause I do so much like fucked up stuff where it's like all like that. I'll just like throw like some feels that just most people just wouldn't be able to like follow and stuff, but they think of it like, like, like Hasman and DJ both think like drummers, you know, and they're so percussive and stuff. Like the way we like feed off of each other is pretty much how we like our songs all sound yeah. the way they do. Oh, Absolutely. that's amazing. Yeah. yeah Hasman yeah. and I were joking the other day. We were like, bro, I like him and I both accumulatively like play more dead notes than anything. <laughs> like <laughs> we're like an extremely percussive band. It's like more just like deads and stops than like even notes, which obviously we're playing, but like, yeah, it's right. just a very percussive on all levels, you know? Yeah. And you guys got the best drummer there is. Oh man. It's a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> So I met Tosh outside of the observatory in North Park when he was playing with Ta Carly Hansen. She was opening up for what? Bad, bad, who were bad, bad sons? sons. Bad yeah, sons. Yeah. Okay. That's what it was. Bad sons. It was first day of tour for us. Was that the first day? That was the first day of our tour uh, back in 2019. Okay. So, but yeah. Yeah. And I remember watching you and I just like the first thing I thought I was like, oh my gosh, like the, the, I've said this before, but it was like when I saw you play, I grew up in San Diego and I saw Blink for years before Travis Barker even joined the band. And then when you, when I saw Blink with Travis Barker, I was like, okay, this is, this band just like exceeded to a whole nother level. And that's why I felt like when I saw Tosh playing, I was like, oh my God, this guy's the best drum I've ever seen in my life. Like yeah. just the way you were doing, I was like, oh my gosh. Like I was bl literally blown away. Oh man. Thank you so much. <laughs> And then you gave me those uh, Oreo balls, and I was like, "This guy is, is friends Oreo. forever." <laughs> Literally, wow. Nan's Nan's Oreo balls. What? I've not experienced these yet. Bro, are you serious? As soon as oh I gosh. get back, as soon as I get back, it's literally like Oreos, cream cheese, and just like covered in in chocolate. It's the best she thing I've ever eaten in my entire life. Literally, she needs to open a shop in you know. Oh, well, she should have moved to Nashville, but. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, 
dude so good um but yeah so yeah i, I knew tosh through through that with carly hansen and then we've kind of stayed in contact ever since and uh we, we love him to death but um real quick tosh just to recap on you, you started playing drums at, yeah, i think two right that's when you started yeah yeah i started when i was a little kid just <laughs> Uh, my dad's a drummer, so I just played my whole life, you know, and, um, and, uh, yeah, I started touring at 16 and, you know, still going strong. <laughs> you started touring at 16, you like, what, uh, you tried out for a, a band through what, like a, a major label, isn't that what happened? I can't remember. Oh, no, it was, uh, it was a uh, Nick West. She, she oh, yeah. Basis. They found me off of Instagram and had me come audition and like, it was crazy. Cause like a, some of my, like some of my favorite drummers auditioned that day, like. And I literally remember like leaving and knowing that like, like some of the best drummers were coming in. I was like, cool. Good to know I didn't get that, you know? And then yeah. three weeks later we started our first tour. So yeah. Did you try out for anything or prior to that? Or was that the first real gig you had ever tried out for? I pretty much had only ever done musical theater before that. Man. Oh, like, really? Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, I was like, I was doing musicals at like 12 until I was 16, you know, like, and, uh, like locally, yeah. I don't even think I've known that. I don't think you've told me this. Yeah. But you did... like a local theater. I, I usually skip that to be honest with a local musical theater company. And I was doing that like three weekends out of the month, like, like for, you know, four years. And it was like, that was my gig, man. <laughs> That's so awesome. Forth. I didn't realize that. So what, what, what musicals are being done? Like, what did you get to play to? Uh, man, I've done like over 30 musicals. We did like, uh, we did like Pinocchio, Rent, uh, 13, wow. uh, Little Mermaid, Shrek, all that stuff. Really? I, yeah, dude. It was, uh, that was like my first like experience, like playing with other musicians other than like church when I was a little kid. I was gonna say, didn't you play, you played in the church, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's like where I really started. But like my first like gig where I, I like made money to play drums was like musicals. So, yeah. wow did you do well you did homeschool for a lot of your your school right yeah, yeah okay I, did. I did went you, to what, high school for one year and then i went back to being homeschooled okay yeah. so did you do homeschool because i remember uh we your mom and my wife talked for a while and then we ended up putting my younger son and or my older son in homeschool because of that whole conversation but <laughs> uh yeah. did, when did you start home did you do homeschool all the way up until the one year of high school and then you went back into homeschool yeah, so I was oh, okay. like all my life growing up, like started okay. with that, and um, it was like, yeah, yeah, it was just kind of perfect for me because I could play drums all the time whenever I wanted, and sure, and then, uh, but yeah, and then it kind of like, soon as I went back to being homeschooled after high school, because it was like I couldn't really play as much, you know, because of you know, high school, school, yeah, all yeah. day, schoolwork, which I'm not very good at, so it was like, you know, stuff like that, and uh, yeah. But as soon as I, I got out, man, I was like, dude, it was like 10, 12 hours every day. You couldn't get, and I still am like that. When I'm at home, I'm just playing drums all day. Like, you can't get me off the drum set. I know, man. Like, your whole Instagram is just you drumming for, like, hours on end. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or now it's more of live videos of you. It's and wild. I, I've never, I think I've gone to your house once where you're not playing drums. Like, every, <laughs> I'll I just click the click track beeping in the garage and he's just blasting away at all times. Like, like we'll, we'll pull up at like 9 PM. He's out there playing. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, literally whenever I, whenever I'm there, the one time I, I wasn't playing, I was probably eating. And then right. <laughs> eating in between playing. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. That's so Well, what year did you go back to high school? Was it for freshman year? Yeah. Freshman years. I, I, uh, I cause I was planning on doing high school all throughout you know uh -huh. um, yeah because that's what my older brother did but then i i just started getting too busy with with drumming and i was like i need to focus on this i was yeah. like what is this school gonna do for me and like it Absolutely was like nothing the conversation ever like because my parents are, are so supportive and awesome oh and yeah they just like they're amazing uh, yeah i know you you know them so it's like literally they're like more that they were more than happy like be like all right but you're going full in on this and i was like i know i understand like <laughs> this is what i want to do and literally like within six months i was on the road touring all over europe and stuff and yeah oh my gosh wow when you went to high school did you um try to join their like the marching band or anything or were you just not even interested in that uh they didn't have one i went to like a, a very small private catholic high school Oh, okay. And they didn't even have a marching band. They had a, a band class 
uh, with a, no disrespect, but a, like a very like beginning band teacher and like, who sure. like, was like, yeah, like he was like, are you sure you want to play drums? We already have two drummers. Like you could learn to play trumpet. And I was like, <laughs> You're like, do I need to show you how I can just destroy both these kids? <laughs> I was like, literally, come on, man. Like, I play like, Why drums, don't you tell but... one of them to tell you? Why don't you hand one of them a like, trumpet? <laughs> it was like the football kid who was like, it was like one, one of them was like this football kid who was like, he was like a quarterback and he's just like, yeah, no, I feel like drums sound like fun, you know, and he was just like, <laughs> really tap on the snare and stuff. Oh man. Okay. I didn't realize that you went back for one year. That's, that's, I mean, that's cool that you attempted and you're like, eh, I, I knew you had an older brother. I didn't know that he ended up going through, through the high school there. That's cool. Yeah. So he went all the way through high school and then it just, and like, but he's like about to go back for his PhD and stuff. And wow. he's like, like the opposite of, of me when it comes to school. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Well, DJ, so when did you move back down to LA? Or like, actually, we stopped at when you got into music. So you started playing guitar. When did you start writing songs? Or was there a band that you got into in high school, middle school, anything like that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, actually, it's funny because I, I didn't really know that, like, you know, come up story of Tosh. Like, mine's like somewhat similar. Like, okay. always been writing songs. Like, I've been writing like little raps and songs, like ever since I was like, even before I got drums, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. but once I got a guitar it was like okay now I have this true songwriting tool like I can really like write some shit now and you know I just started playing and it, it you know it's like I had like eight hour days of just practice 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 uh, when I got into high school I went my freshman year and after that freshman year I got into homeschooling because I had so much gigging um, oh wow I was playing in like uh, you know, I wasn't doing like big world tours or anything, but I was doing like, you know, West Coast little like weekend runs and stuff like that. And they, you know, like bleed over into the week. So like going to school was kind of it was a pain in the ass. Like I was missing so much. So I got into homeschool and, you know, I was playing in predominantly like heavier metal bands like death mm -hmm. metal stuff but you know it's like i was like 15 playing with like 30 30 year old dudes and stuff you know oh, and these wow. like were like brutal crazy bands and my mom's just like like <laughs> hearing the shit that's coming out she's uh, like skeptical but still like same as tasha's parents very supportive like always pushing me that's awesome after like my sophomore year of homeschooling i was like i don't even want to do this like this is just a I'm, it literally got down to the point where I'm just cliff noting every my whole entire homeschool packet so I can get back to playing music, you know, like, right. it's all about. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, just through like playing in the local scene, like I started playing with like some of the like bigger artists and stuff um, and started doing some cooler tours, like went to Japan, did some cool stuff. Wow. With with the, the metal band? No, no, I actually, I started playing for my buddy, Jordan Blake, who he had a, a little like dance, like a EDM type project called Watch Out There's Ghosts. Okay. He used to sing in a Skylet Drive and it was like his, his band after that. <laughs> oh, I know that band. Uh, that yeah. name sounds familiar for sure. Like got back together, their original like lineup and they're, they're gigging and stuff, which is cool. Oh, that's cool. They're like one of the, I don't know, to me, they're like one of the first like scene emo core bands that like, like pioneered it, you know, like up there with like Alistana and stuff like that. Sure. But, um, you know, I, I met a lot of people and got some good experience touring with him for a little while. And through that, I got a gig down here in LA in 2010, 2011, and uh -huh. just moved and been here ever since. Wow. So what was the band that you, was it another band, established band that you joined down in LA when it took you there yeah. or what took you there? For sure. Yeah. It's actually like probably one of the like sillier bands I've joined. Um, it was the band uh, Vampires Everywhere, which is like a, a broke man's Marilyn Manson. Oh, rad. <laughs> <laughs> when you say that, what does that mean? Like, did you, what, is he like up there, like, like get ups and stuff, like makeup oh, right. and the whole deal? Full leather, lipstick, everything. Oh, like, man. Full, That's awesome. Off, like, right. thing. I learned how to do makeup really well. But so um, you have to, you obviously, you had to play the part in that as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it served its purpose, you know, like it, it, it gave me my foot in into the LA music scene, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, like, I played with like a couple of other different artists. Like, I played with Dorothy for a while. And then. Oh, wow. Um, okay. I know, I know her. 
Yeah, yeah. And then the most recent band that I played for was Head PE, which is like the G punk band from a uh, where are they from? Costa Mesa, I think. Or, okay. um, but they were also like you know the poor man's Limp Biscuit. I've been in a lot of like poor man's. For- <laughs> that's funny. I mean, yeah, that's 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 fitting. I mean, we're kind of just poor, so. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are rad. I love your sound. I was watching uh, the, the the video for California Fragilistic. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. It took me like five minutes of like, I knew what it was, but I'm like, it was like t- such a tongue twister for me. <laughs> I was like saying it before I got in the interview. I'm like, okay, I got to do this so I don't screw it up. But um, yeah, man, I watched that video. Well, I love you guys. Tried. Most people are like, most people are like Califragilistic Expiala Doge. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Well, Tosh, you lived in Costa Mesa, right? Is that where you grew up, or I'm in? So I'm in Orange, Orange County? County, which is where Costa Mesa is, but I'm in Fullerton. So like, oh, okay, yeah. Fullerton. That's where it was. I'm I knew you're close. Yeah, I'm a little bit more north. So, gotcha. But, but yeah, it's funny because like Head PE was like we have so many like connections. Like my uh, my tattoo artist is actually like his uncle is the original drummer for head PE from back in the nineties. Really? Uh, yeah. I it's need- like, some, I have so many crazy connections and stuff. So you played with them DJ? Yeah. Yeah. I was with them from like 2018 to 2020 ish. Like when COVID ruined okay. everything. Sure. Okay. <laughs> and did but you, yeah, how- it was, it was, I enjoyed playing with them. They were, that was, that was a really fun band to play with. That's awesome. So real quick, Tosh. So when did you guys meet? When did you meet DJ? Or is this new? So, so funny enough, actually, DJ went for the pandemic. He went to Australia and he was like, I'll let, I can let, he can elaborate. Yeah. How'd you get, yeah. How did you get to Australia? Tell me the story real quick. And then, uh, we'll... you know, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a player baby. So, uh, you know, I had a little <laughs> thing over there. Um, so, uh, you know, I had a little chick over there. So when everything, like when all my tours got canceled, when everything was all kind of fucked up, like I, uh, I was just like, man, like I just had nine months of touring canceled. I don't know what's going on. This is so crazy. You know, that's your livelihood, right? At that point. And you know, when it first hit too, everyone's so skeptical and like trying to be optimistic, like, oh, this isn't gonna last, like this and this, this and that, whatever. Two weeks, man, man, it was supposed to be two weeks. When everything hit, I was just like, I don't know what to expect. Like I could be, you know, I don't know. I just didn't know what to do. So I literally just like panic jumped to Australia and was there for two years. It was wild. Oh my gosh. So you, Mm -hmm. so have you recently moved back to LA then? It sounds like it, I mean, two years. Yeah, I moved back in December. Yeah, like oh, I haven't wow. been. Um, so we we actually but, we actually started the band. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say we started the band in opposite countries. Like uh, DJ was yeah. in Australia, and uh, and then Hasma and I were both in California, and it, like so we were just writing back and forth and stuff, sending music back and forth with each other, just like. I mean, like I would send him drum parts. He would send me tracks he already had basically done just without drums. And and uh, we pretty much wrote like that. Like me and Hazma had jammed like twice at that time. Like he had come down to my house like twice because he was like the only vaccinated musician that my parents would let come over. Like because <laughs> no one else was vaccinated yet. He got that shit right away. Oh, really? So then they were cool with him coming over? Yeah. So he was like the first person to jam with me during like the pandemic. So really? Yeah, so we just were like getting together and playing music and stuff, and like, uh, and then he told me about this project that him and DJ were working on, and he played me uh, our first song, "Cell Phone," basically with with the program drums that DJ had put on it, mm-hmm. and um, and I was like, dude, this is I was like, I want to be in this band, like this is my this is my band now, like, and he was just like, dude, we'd love it. That's awesome. So, well, how did you then meet Hazma? Well, uh, I guess DJ, how did you meet him? Because you guys were playing together before Tosh got in the mix. Yeah, well, Hazma um, used to play for Crazy Town. Right. I did see that. Him and I had both toured together when I was in Head PE. So, like, we met in New York on a run, like a co-headlining run out there. So we did that tour. And then a couple tours later, because Head PE did a lot of Europe stuff, you know, like mm-hmm. we lived almost like it was crazy i did more euro touring there than american with the band and uh hasma 
being from Italy, his hometown band ended up opening one of our tours and him and I got really close on that tour. So like, we were just kind of like buddies or whatever, you know, from touring and stuff. And when I had the idea for this band and like started getting the song ideas, I was like, who would be good? I was just planning on just self-producing it all myself, you know? And then I was like, oh, you know what? Forget that. Like, I really want to like go back to the like natural, like organic feel of having having members and having like a full situation. So I just randomly hit him up just to be like, Hey, would you, can I throw you some cash to play on these tracks? You know, like, cause mm -hmm. you know, he's a busy guy. He's got a going on and he kind of like responded like, dude, like, this is so cool. Like, don't give me any money. Like I want to be a part of the project. So him and I just started writing, you know, like back and forth going. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. he, he, I saw on his Instagram that he kept ripping you know, this dual color haired kids fucking videos off Instagram and playing bass to them. Like, I believe that's how they met. Yeah, that, that's actually was, literally. Yeah, that's literally how we met is he would just like uh, take my my drum videos and he would like play bass on top of them. And like that was pretty much Hasma's whole Instagram was just him playing on top of my drum videos. Really? So he would just like grab your video and like duet it type deal and yeah, or put and himself there. He would just he would just do that and he'd put them next to each other and just play on it. <laughs> and and I saw that he was playing for Crazy Town at the time and I was like uh, like I'm like Butterfly is one of my favorite songs of all time, you know. So That's so was, crazy. So I just like lost it and I was like, dude, we need to be friends. <laughs> and then uh and then he like sent me like a voice memo that i don't even know we haven't even talked about this since then but he like sent me a voice memo and it was just like the funniest just like he's like you are so good and i am your biggest fan and like i was something that was just like that and i was like dude i love this guy <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So you're just seeing this guy put up videos and you're like, who the hell is playing bass to my songs? And then you realized what band he was playing with at the time and, and just decided to reach out to him. Yeah. Well, actually, my dad like showed me. He was like, yo, dude, you got to repost this shit. This guy's insane. And uh, <laughs> so we were just like, because he was just like, he was just doing bass lines that aren't like re even real bass lines. Like he was just like doing like weird, like, crossover stuff and like just doing stuff that doesn't even like it's not even like something you would ever hear in a song and i was like that's perfect i need to jam with him oh my gosh and we're because you a lot of the time you're just doing but you'll do covers and stuff on your instagram right uh honestly not really it's mostly not, just me playing like, just I, you like playing? my covers will be like my my story i'll do stuff like that Maybe that's yeah. what I'm seeing more of because I, I but now I guess lately it's been a lot every time I see your post it's always like live stuff because yeah. you've been playing live so much i guess i'd have to like dig back down and, and see but i remember you would do some covers though you'd be like oh here's blah 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 and then you would just play it yeah that was a lot of my stories though like okay uh, maybe that's what i'll see yeah yeah and then my main post i would have like this engineer friend mix my drum my drum videos you know i got my studio like fully set up and i would just yeah like, record it you know and he just like literally started taking just random drum files and playing on top of them you know like I didn't even know how he was doing it. I think he was just taking like a screen recording, to be honest. Like, <laughs> he takes the screen recording and then like he, yeah, put it on his computer and like he does it like the old man way where like he'll, he won't just like edit it real quick in on the phone. He'll like put it on the computer and like full blown. <laughs> it's amazing. That's so that. funny. And, and you knew that he was doing this then, DJ, right? And then you said, yeah. oh, this, or you just knew that he was copying these or he was taking these video parts and you just asked him about it or how did that happen it was at, like you know um i was just like who is this like who's this dude you keep like jamming with like are you guys like agreeing on doing these like beat collabs or are you just ripping his stuff and he's like no man i'm just taking his stuff like <laughs> he's like he's just taking them and i'm like bro you guys like do you guys know each other he's like yeah we're talking this and that this and that i was like we have to get him in the band but don't say anything to him yet like getting tosh was premeditated we treated him like the hottest girl at school where we're like all right need to present this to him but not, it needs to be perfect like we got to be on our a game for this well <laughs> but yeah once, i would i, I would think so too because it's like the guy's playing with all these people and it's you probably and as a drummer, right, you kind of get the pick of the litter, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> I just I yeah. just play whatever I think is cool, man. <laughs> like, 
No, but okay, I want to hear this courting. So you guys were like, okay, we got to play. We had to strategically play this correctly. And then when do you present yeah. Tosh with the with the the plan? Yeah, totally. And I, I mean, I don't even think like Hasma pitched it to him or anything. He was just like, yo, check out these songs when we had them kind of, you know, because for him and I had a bunch of like scrappy little ideas at first, which were cool, but it took like a, a month or so to like hone into like the sound we were trying to do, especially since it was all developed over FaceTime. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, there was no actual like physical like okay we're in a room we feel this this is cool like we were able to like somehow like develop like this energy through him and I just vibing you know from across the world which is pretty special to me because like to like connect with another musician on the level that we have in a room is special let alone like being able to like bring that energy together from you know across the world just from facetiming like mm -hmm. it's unbelievable that we've been able to like mesh that well and then now that we're all you know together it's even more unbelievable like we have an energy and organic vibe that just i've never experienced in a band before that's so awesome. it, it, honestly Definitely it's special. something i've never something i've never felt before like when we get in a room and we play it's like dude it's just like it, it feels like it's the dudes that i've like learned how to play music with basically like it's like we I don't know. It just, it, it's so fitting. And like, when we perform, like we all perform the same way, dude. We all perform. Like, we're just like, we give it everything we have. And like, it's, it's literally just us doing what we would want to watch someone do. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's literally just like what, whatever we want to do, we do. And, and it always works out. And it's like, it's always just like, man, we'll do, we'll just like, we don't even really rehearse. We just like, when they come down, we just like jam. And then we like, and then we're like, oh, we'll be fine. And, then, and, it, and it always works out like dope, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess if you're all really, I mean, obviously you're all in, extremely talented musicians. So it's like, yeah, we'll just go up there and we, we got this. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> so when, Brother. when do you get officially asked to join the band then Tosh? So, so, uh, Hasma asked me if they could he's like can we hire you Sa kind of same thing he was like can we hire you to play on this recording and I was like dude don't even like worry about it but I said that before I listened to the song because he was like I'll send you the song and uh -huh. but, and then you can like tell me your rate or whatever and I was like no dude literally don't even worry about it like because I liked Hasma so much and then they sent me the song and I was like, cause I was kind of just like, yeah, I'll lay down this song for you. Kind of like putting it on like the back burner, like no, no worries, you know? Right. Right. And then like, I heard it and I was like, oh my God, like, what is this? Like, it was like all of my favorite bands and artists in one song. And I was like, this is literally so perfect. And so I did it. And it's funny what, what ended up coming out was like the first time I had ever played it is what I recorded the first time I ever played it. And then I just sent it to DJ. Like, I had listened to the song like twice and then I just was like, okay. And I just like turned on my computer and like set it up with like my, uh, my interface and stuff. And I just hit record and played it. And that's pretty much, and that's actually, that is exactly what you hear. Like on record. cell phone. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. So you were playing with Hasma before and he just kind of, and, and then he said, oh yeah. Like, Hey, will you play on this project? Once he kind of got a little vibe with you. Yeah, and then he like kind of like uh, like he just offered to hire me for the one song, and then I was like, no, I want to do everything. And then uh, he's like, we kind of want to like make this a band, and like, and I was like, no, it like okay, done. I'm in. I'm in the band like a million percent. Like, because it's just like it's like the project I've always dreamed of being in, you know. And, and mm -hmm. it's like it's uh and when and when people hear it too, people who know me and I've grown up with, they are always like oh, this is what you wanted to do forever. Like, we know, we already know, you know? That's so cool. So, yeah. I remember when I, the first time I interviewed you, when we did it at the Hard Rock in San Diego, yeah. Um, you were talking about, you had, you weren't like officially in a band, right? I mean, you were playing with a bunch of people. You're playing with Carly yeah. and you're playing with, uh, I, I don't know if it was, maybe it was just her at the time, but like, you're like, yeah, it would be cool to be like in a band. And now that I've talked to you, you're in this one and you're in Bexley, like, and I, I don't know if you're official. I'm, I would imagine you're probably officially in Jaden or a, at least yeah. as a drummer for the, it's just cool to see how that, you know, kind of progressed for you. I'm like so happy for you. It's so rad. Yeah. 
well and like this this project too is especially like what i've wanted to do because it's like i like literally we write songs where we start with the drums like we've done done that so much oh time. wow it literally yeah. starts with just like a complete like full drum take and i'll send to him and then dj will chop it up and honestly it will, sometimes won't even sound like what i sent because it's so crazy and like <laughs> This man is a, a gangster with the with the, the editing skills, dude. Like sometimes I'm like, I don't even understand how he does it. That's rad. Yeah. Do you ever get like worried, DJ, when you when he sends you something? Are you gonna be like, uh, should I manipulate this and hope that he's not pissed at me, or, <laughs> or is it just like whatever? Because I mean, I don't manipulate it in a sense of like, I never compromise the beats or anything. If it- anything i just rearrange structures you know uh, God. I, well i figured i mean you're a drummer too so that's yeah. helps so i know he, he he you know he has confidence in in what i do with his drum tracks and you know i i've never really been like hey do you mind if i alter this i kind of just do it and send it and he's <laughs> excited so it's like cool <laughs> I, dude but he's broke. never sent me something that I was like, why? Like, why did you do that? Every time he sends me something, I'm like running around the room like, yeah, what the hell? Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. That's rather you start with the drums on some of the songs. I did. I'm sure. Have you read uh, Travis Barker's autobiography? Yeah, yeah, I did. He, he talks about how I think the self-titled Blink album, it was all him on drums. And he just like. It start the whole record. I think it was just him on drums, and then Mark and Travis or Mark and Tom wrote to the drums. Yeah, because he had to he had to leave on tour, which is actually funny because, like, before I leave for tour, every time I send them a bunch of drum tracks to like. So I'm oh. like, all right, here now you have stuff to work on while I'm gone. Like, <laughs> Here's my parts. So, like pretty much. <laughs> that I'm sifting through. Which, by the way, you need to resend one to me. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Now it's not the. Like, I'll text you about it later. <laughs> He's like, hang on. Let me... <laughs> What's the song title? <laughs> Bro, your song titles are the funniest thing. I think it's, I don't know. Which one was it? I don't know. I don't even want to say it because you have some. Yeah, we, song we can title. leave that off of air. I, yeah, I, yeah. I send them yeah. song titles that don't stay the song titles. They're just okay. But you, you just create the song title name and you're like, here's this. Well, like, I just don't want to be like drum take number 14. Like, okay. What's the know, most creative? Want... What say, just give me one example because now I'm curious. Crunchy toothpaste. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, I was literally gonna say crunchy toothpaste. <laughs> that is a good one. You should keep that one. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, <a> great name. <laughs> That's funny. So well, Tosh, how do you keep up with all of this? I mean, you're doing the Jaden stuff. I'm you were playing with Machine Gun Kelly for a minute, and then you were doing like two sets on those shows, right? Because you're playing with both of them. When well, they were no, so actually, so uh, funny enough, I was doing Machine Gun Kelly and I was almost going to do both sets. And as soon as the tour started, Rook was like, good to go. Oh, so okay. It, it saved my life because I would have been like so dead after that. But like it was, um, so he actually like made it in time. So we were just on the tour. I was opening for them then. Okay. So I was playing for Machine Gun Kelly and then. By the time I was opening for him, Rook was all good. And uh, okay, that's good. Yeah, because I was wondering if I was going to see you on because he played the Super Bowl, and I was like, oh, I wonder if Tosh is going to play. And then I noticed that he had him back, so I was like, okay, well, at least he's back and good, right? I mean, because yeah, that was a pretty tragic healthy. experience. Yeah, yeah he's, healthy, he's doing good. He's chilling, man. He's uh, he's awesome. We I see him all the time still. So we're like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so honestly, man, I've I've just started to like manage my time and like realize what I want to do, you know, and like um i've able i've been able to get like a pretty good like system down to where like i i manage my time wisely and my um i've i mean luckily enough like this probably is gonna sound lame but like i've i've honestly been able to start saying like no to some stuff like to be able to uh uh, that's good i mean you want to get at that you want to get to that level where you're not like i have to say yes to everything to make sure that i'm yeah able to work it's like I, I realize like, you know, I want to put time into this band and I want to put uh, time into Jaden and stuff. So I just kind of like use it wisely. And I know like, you know, we're going to have two months off after this tour and we're just going to go so hard with Super Creep. We're going to write as much as we can. We're going to play as much as we can. And then, you know, and then it's like I head back out with Jaden. So it's just like going back and forth is kind of like um, it's like, you know, when I, I think when I first met you in 2019, I was like, I would do a tour with Carly, come home for a day, go and do a tour with Bryce Vine. And then, yeah, like, that's that's what like, you were doing. Pretty much, I was just rotating and never had any time at home to chill. And I've just kind of started to like 
try to prioritize like what I really want to do and, and, uh, put time into, you know? Uh huh. Oh, you, yeah, you were playing with Bryce fine. I think, were you new to join playing with him or was that? Yeah. Uh, so I was, okay. so I was like kind of, uh, just like subbing because his drummer had just had a baby. Okay. And, um, I would love to still play with him, but, uh, I've just, it's been, you know, too hectic and too busy. So this guy, Chad has to use an incredible drummer has been filling in. Okay. Uh, taking over for Al. And so Al and him have been going back and forth now, but, but yeah, pretty much all 2019 and 2020 during the pandemic, like that was my main thing. Cause Al, Al was living in Boston. So uh, like pretty much every week Bryce was doing like college live streams. So just like, it would be like a live stream concert that only a college could hear. Oh, uh, okay. And so I would just, we would go up to LA mask up and, and, you know, live in the studio, do those concerts and, um, so that was like pretty much what was keeping me working during the pandemic. Was Bryce, yeah. You know? So yeah. I think it was funny. I remember because I was working at a radio station in San Diego at the time, and I was there in the morning, and they used to have whatever channel like uh, Ryan and Kelly were on was yeah. always like on the TV in the studio. Like there was no remote. It was just like constantly on this channel, and I think it was one of the local cable channels, so it would play the news or whatever. And I remember looking like I was in the studio working on something. And I look up and I'm like is that Tosh? Cause there's no sound. And I remember seeing you, you were playing, I think with Bryce, I think. Yeah. That was a, uh, with Bryce and loud luxury. We did Kelly and Ryan. Yeah. It was funny. Yeah. I remember I was filming the TV and I think I was sending it to you. I'm like, dude, <laughs> like what? Bro, that was all, the, so funny. all the moms, dude, all the moms were like, no way you were on Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just happened to catch it. And I took text Tara and I'm like, look, Tosh is on Ryan and Kelly right now. She's like, oh, that's so crazy. <laughs> oh, man. So are you doing, so you're doing this band? Are you still doing Bexley? Uh, not really. I've kind okay. of like been a bit too busy for uh, that, which like I'm still great friends with them, but they're they're working on a ton of music with um, uh, with a really dope drummer from Seattle. Uh, I shouldn't have even said that because I can't remember his name, but I will look it up and find out. But he, No, he's he, a dope he, drummer. He that's all we know. <laughs> yeah and they, just, they just released a new single actually and it's, it's really killer dude like it's super good but yeah so okay. uh, but yeah right and honestly man like i've just been putting so much time into this going back and forth with Jaden, and this has been like my main thing and i i got a few other random stuff actually like something i'll, I'll text you about after this that i'm doing okay uh in like at, like as soon as i get home from this tour i'm doing a filming with someone that i'm like so psyched for <laughs> okay yeah you better text me because now i'm super curious i'm just gonna yeah, remind yeah, you right yeah. after <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and be like, yeah, what, what is it? Well, that's killer, man. That's so cool. And um, and then obviously, are you guys gonna put like a record out? Is that the plan with this DJ? Or, um, I mean, right now with the band, like, still just kind of like in its, you know, in like elementary years. Like, you know, we're still trying to just like build it up and get the awareness out there. I feel like content wise, it's like a, and I we're all kind of on the same page. It's like, like kind of a waste to you know drop what 10 a bunch both. of songs so we're kind of just doing singles right now um mm -hmm. we have been talking about like because we're coming up in june it'll be like a year of us dropping songs and stuff mm -hmm. so i think we're gonna like group everything we've dropped so far and release it as like an album but then everything will still be in single format as well you know okay but, uh, as far as all of our new music and stuff is go goes, um, I think we're still planning on just doing, you know, like single drops and video drops and stuff like that, just to maximize the amount of content we have. Because, you know, right now, just with the way, you know, the following is and stuff, it, you know, like releasing everything all at once is kind of just like putting it all out there and kind of, you know, right. not maximizing the, you know, the that options you have. Pop, totally, you know, totally. You know, we have months of content drops if we keep a whole record worth of songs and release them as singles, you know? Yeah, and it's kind of just be like, here's everything. Okay, now we got to go write everything again. <laughs> you know, like, you know, the industry is very single-based right now anyways, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, most big artists are doing that in the first place, and it's like, to have, you know, the, a fan base whose attention span can, like, really take in a record, it's like, you know, you got to have a lot of a lot of people really rocking with you. You know, Not, no one's really doing it unless you're like, like, you know, Ed Sheeran or something like what's the point? 
it's even the big rappers man they're all just single dropping you know and then once every couple of years you get a record but like we're just trying to you know be the best to us write what we like and so far that's working you know <laughs> like people yeah. are really with this but now you know the new stuff's got a really cool vibe um <clears throat> you know it's definitely like matured since we've been writing more and more together even though we're all in now like we still write the same way like we don't write in the same room. we still do it like the intercontinental way oh um, really just that, i guess that was my next question like so now that you're all went well real quick when did you guys first play together as a trio like in person oh. it was in probably december when i first got back like i was back for like two days and then we're in a room like immediately Dude. And not not to mention, I was like so sick, and they were like, "We don't care, like we're jamming." Because I was about to leave for um, a few shows with Jaden and Royal uh -huh. and Serpent, and uh, so I was like, I was about to to dip, and I was like, "Gosh, I'm like super sick. I still want to jam if you're if you're cool." They're like, "We don't even care." So they came down and jammed, and I was like half dead, like jamming. It was like <laughs> the most fun jam session like I've ever had. Man, it was so rad. And, and it was then, the first time you had ever played with them. Like Dude, into all of you in person. Even, like the first time we'd ever even like talked, like in that wasn't over text, DJ. Oh like, wow! Yeah, yeah, I had never even met before in person. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. Only like a magical day. Yeah, it's funny wow. that like, we actually found out that I saw DJ when he was in that band Vamp Vampires Everywhere when I was like twelve. <laughs> really, really? Dude, we, Where'd you I, see him play? Uh, dude, it was like we're trying to remember. It was like. In January, I remember, and I know some dude invited me, but I think it was in Santa Ana or something like that, maybe. Or, or uh... was it on like was it on the Orgy tour? Because we did a tour with Orgy, I remember around that time. Dude, I think that might have been. It was, there was another opening act that we were there to see, and okay, there was, there was like, and then I remember like, oh, I knew I knew the drummer that was in your band, and I was like. Was it was it that tour we did with Alisana where it was like hella bands? It was like a six band bill. Maybe I don't know. I would have to go back and look, man. It was like a <laughs> it was like a one of those like day of. I didn't know any of the bands, and like this this drummer was yeah. like, "Oh, hey, do you want to come see my band play?" And I think it was it was maybe it was like Santa Ana or Anaheim. It was somewhere in Orange County though, and it was like, um, my dad like me and my dad just went and watched this show, and I remember I saw your band because I kind of knew the drummer at the time as well yeah yeah shout out to josh ingram by the way yeah dude, funny. Great world who knows <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow okay so now that you're back and all together you're still writing in this similar mode or the same mode that you've been doing uh, yeah it's just the beginning it works like i feel like we have the the highest level of creativity that way you know everyone gets their ideas out this way you know because it's basically like Tosh will send me drums <clears throat> and either Hasma will just send me raw like bass ideas, just mm -hmm. not even two drums. Like he'll just play to a click and just send me like, he'll just be jamming out and send me different riffs and stuff, or he'll play different riffs over drum tracks. And then I kind of like take the two things and start orchestrating stuff, doing samples. And like, I have a very hip hop approach to like writing our music. Like, I usually don't even touch a guitar until it's like pretty much done. Really? Okay. And a lot of the new stuff is like actually very minimal guitar. Like I'm doing a lot, like Hazma is such a large presence on the bass. Mm -hmm. that there's not much room for me to really play heavy stuff on guitar. Like, like I'm not <laughs> power chord for like low, you know, riffs or anything. It's like more or less leads and like accent stuff you know to like kind of just like glaze over the top and add melody which i prefer like i love you know i come from a very like hip-hop like kind of more like funky jazzy background so it's like i enjoy that type of guitar playing more so it's it's perfect you know but um but yeah it's just like it's it kind of all just like works this way and it's like everybody's happy with the way we write so it's like why change it you know sure yeah and still managing to progress and evolve through this process so you know if it ain't broke don't fix it right right well i love the riff that you have in uh california fragilistic you, like and that's good that's hazma like i just matched what he was playing like it sounds he sent, sick though 
And I was just like, okay, how can I make this like interesting? And, you know, sometimes I have open areas to do a heavier kind of riff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, that's that one definitely has some some tricky riffs and it's fun. Yeah. And the newest one. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Tosh. Oh, I was just going to say that's like like that's the one that for me, it's just like that truly embodies like really like how we all play, you know, because it's like we're all just showing off and we're all like, so like, we're like the silliest band ever, dude. Like we just literally are like, Hey, this sounds funny. Like, let's just put like a a reggaeton cats, 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 cat. Like it randomly just like so much, like we just literally do like whatever we think is cool, you know? And that, I think that song really showcases that because it's us just kind of showing off the whole time and having fun. Like Hasmol do stuff where it's just like, he's just like sliding up and down the neck for like you know two bars and it's like the coolest stuff ever man it's so fun that's amazing and then beast mode's the new one that's the latest one you put out yeah okay what tell the me about one. that song <clears throat> um that was that song's actually funny because i have wrote that that's like the first song that i wrote when i got to australia like when i was sitting there and i was like you know shit i don't know what to do like you know i was doing a hip-hop stuff but i was like you know really like that song kind of sparked the idea for super creep but oh, it was interesting in, but it was in hip-hop format originally you know and the riff was a little bit different and we did the same thing with odd world actually where like i had these hip-hop songs that were like half done and like i knew there was something cool about them so i'd present them to hazma and i'd take the drums and all the subs off and stuff and i'd be like yo flip this like write some riffs to it and let's see what we could do and and this mode was that where it just kind of develops and you know it, it's cool to finally have it out in the world because it's just mm-hmm. been shelved for so long you know what i mean sure but yeah the song's cool man I, it's just like a fun just kind of like energy like pump up song you know what i mean just mm-hmm. mode you know like go crazy and just yeah i love the name like, it's so good <laughs> yeah no Marshawn Lynch like like that's what I was thinking I was like man we got to get like we got to get this song like into the NFL or something <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, dude. yeah uh, like and the what is it Monday Night Football like the intro yeah, yeah. Out what, get rid of Carrie Underwood and 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 have it be you know super creep yeah, yeah. I never take those things into consideration when writing lyrics and <laughs> screwed as far as that goes yeah. it'll be nothing but sensors it'll just be yeah, bro, right. uh, 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 bro. <laughs> like just in- oh that's awesome well dude i love what you guys are doing and i and and it's always so fantastic to see you tosh i, I mean all the success you had is so amazing and Thank you so much man and the you you actually inspired us to get my younger son a drum kit and i texted you about it and you sent me the one to get we got him we got him that kit and we're now that we're finally here in nashville he takes lessons every week man and he loves it so oh, that's thank so you cool, dude. i love that so much man yeah so he learned about five, he knows about four beats now and like they're, they're just starting to teach him fills which is just funny to hear him like a six-year-old like go Brr. yeah <laughs> so i love man, that i appreciate yeah you're definitely the inspiration for for that so thank you again so much and dude, dj thanks. dude nice to meet you man this has been awesome absolutely thanks so much for having us on man like it's been it's been a blast chatting with you cool well i can't wait to you guys do i know you've done a bunch of shows just in la right or i saw you played a whiskey and a couple others um you need to do a tour out here to uh, yeah, middle yeah. Tennessee. We're, 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 gonna, we're, we're playing a bunch of shows and uh, going, going, you know, just kind of doing what we can and uh, getting our name out there as much as we can. And uh, we're definitely going to be doing a lot more shows and, and touring coming up soon. And yep, yeah, yep. absolutely. Amazing. Amazing. Well, I have one more question. I know Tosh, you got like uh, some press or some- big things going on at your on your end <laughs> so uh, let me make sure you get get to that but i want to know uh, i'll start with you dj do you have any advice for aspiring artists for aspiring artists yeah i mean like 
man, like what I've always kind of lived by with this music stuff is just don't quit, you know? Like, I think that's the biggest roadblock that people run into is, you know, life happens, money stuff happens and people shelf it and go, you know, I'll get back to it, you know? once I get this going, I'll get back to the music and that's where it all goes astray. You know, you always like, if this is truly your dream and this is truly what you want to do and this is what you want your life to be, you have to put it first and just never quit, you know, because with this stuff, there's high highs and low lows and you never know, you know, when the next huge thing is going to hit or when a gig is going to pop up on you or something like that. You know, you just got to nonstop, just push with just like, just never let up and just keep going, you know? I love it. I love it. What about you, Tasha? I want to hear your advice. See if it yeah, changed. So, so I mean, pretty much, I, I agree with DJ a million percent. You got to put, uh, you got to put what you want to do first, and and there should never be a backup plan. You know, it should be like, you know, if you got to if you got to work and do something to make money, that's that's fine. But I'm saying like it should always be like career wise. Like if you want to do it, you better really do it. Like and uh, and go. You know. 100 percent in and, and just uh you know just be the best musician and artist that you could be you know put put all your effort into it and uh work on it and practice as hard as you can and yeah Bring me the best world.